I'd like to call the Saline City Council meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, we have some uh, changes to the agenda on the counter tonight. Everybody got an updated um, motions on the uh, closed session. We do have a motion to go into closed session and then also an additional motion to end the closed session and return to the regular meeting. Does everybody have that? Yes. Okay. Um, and are there any other changes to the agenda? Actually, I wanted to add, we wanted to add the countywide transit uh, program. Discussion. Is there any other changes to the agenda tonight, Mr. Roth? I just wondered where that was going to be added. Under discussion. Under discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other changes to the agenda? In fact, we have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Move Marl. Second to Har. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. <coughs> We don't have any absences. And uh, I need uh, Mr. Nearing to come forward, please. <laughs> Tim? Yes, it is. <laughs> It's a great privilege to have an opportunity to thank you for your years of service for the city. And I'm really glad you could come tonight. And I know you have some family members here. Um, I think we're going to face this way so everybody can see you. Thank you. I'd like to read a letter of recognition. Um, I've been fortunate to work with Dick uh, for many years. Um, he's been serving on our planning commission. And he's been a, a volunteer extraordinaire in our community on multiple levels. And I'll share this uh, proclamation uh, letter of recognition with all of you and you can see what he's done to contribute to our community. I know we have many more years of your contribution in a different capacity as um, with our sister city relationships. Um, whereas Richard H. Nearing has been a resident of the Saline community since 1970 and has been an active member of the community, dedicating himself to public and community service for the betterment of Saline. And whereas Richard H. Nearing is a past member of the Saline City Council, having served in 1972, 1973, 1975, and 1976, along with serving on several boards and commissions as a representative of City Council, and is an active member and participant in Saline Sister City Relationships, the Brecken, Saline Brecken Friendship Guild, um, and the Saline Lindenberg Freundschaftsverein, which is our, our partnership. That means friendships, true friendships, right? Partnership. And whereas Richard H. Nearing has been a devoted member of the Saline City Planning Commission for the past 30 years, serving many times throughout his tenure as a, on the commission as chairperson. And whereas through his service on the Saline City Planning Commission, Richard H. Nearing has helped to shape Saline with careful thought, vision, and planning for the strong, vibrant, and industrious community Saline is today. And whereas Richard H. Nearing has recently announced his resignation from the Saline City Planning Commission, which became effective November 1, 2012. Now, therefore, I, Gretchen Driscoll, Mayor of the City of Saline, on behalf of the Saline City Council, the Saline City Planning Commission, and the citizens of Saline, to hereby extend to Richard H. Nearing a sincere thank you for all the time and energy he has devoted to the Saline community for the enrichment and betterment of all who live, work, and visit here. With sincere best wishes for good health and happiness for many years to come. We will miss you very much. You know you're going to see him out doing bratwurst, right? I really appreciate this, but I was looking for a Cadillac or a Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, budgets are tight. Thank you, Mayor. I got a used mental. Madam Representative. <laughs> New Mayor. Thank you. And Council. It's been wonderful working with the majority of all of you and uh, I would do it all over again. I don't know if I'd be on city council again. <laughs> you know, I always say, they ask me to run again, and I always say, just put bamboo shoots underneath my fingernails. <laughs> but I have enjoyed it. There isn't a person that I have met in the city 
that I haven't enjoyed working with. There's pictures of seven mayors up there that I've worked with, starting with Hubert Beach and ending with you. And uh, I learned a lot, and I'll carry these memories with me forever. Thank you, Mayor. Next, we have our audit presentation. Good evening. My name is Martin Olenek. I'm the partner on the audit uh, from Plant Moran. And with me are Alicia Davis, who's the manager, as well as Nick, Nick Gurica, who's the in charge. Uh, Nick would have been here pretty much every single day during the audit. Um, Alicia and I were uh, supervi supervisors and basically looking over uh, the audit function, making sure everything went smoothly. Um, tonight, we're going to go through a few different documents. We're not going to go through uh, everything page by page or anything like that. Uh, did want to mention, uh, first of all, the financial statements, which is the thickest document that you have. Uh, basically, um, th there's one page that's in there, the opinion letter, which belongs to us. Everything else uh, has been basically, it's a culmination of all the records and all record keeping over the year. And uh, the opinion letter, I did want to point out that it is a clean opinion, what's called an unqualified opinion or essentially basically means without any qualification. So basically what that means is the financial statements that are in front of you, you can rely on uh, when you're doing your budgeting, when you're making sure that you, know, you can plan for the next year and for the next upcoming years. So I did want to mention that uh, Alicia and Nick are going to go through the graphs, which are basically snapshots of the main items in the, gra in the report. And then I'm going to come back and uh, basically discuss the management letter, which is uh, the last document that uh, you have with you. Uh, feel free to interject or if you have any questions or anything like that uh, during uh, the presentation or you can hold off until the end. That's completely fine. I did want to mention that, um, and I'll probably repeat myself and do it again later on, but I do want to say thank you for having us as the auditors of the city. Um, we've, um, I know that uh, it's kind of uh, painful, I guess, to go through an audit. Uh, the responsibilities that the accounting team uh, has uh, throughout the process, it's it's just an extra layer of responsibilities that they have outside of the day-to-day -day functions that they have to go through. So we definitely appreciate the co uh, cooperation during the audit. And as you can, you'll see, um, we have, um, I, I guess, a really good message to, uh, to give you over uh, today. I know that uh, the city has been going through some tough financial position, uh, but overall the record keeping has been very good and uh, the, the job has been done very well. So thank you. Thank you, Martin, and good evening, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and dive right in, uh, starting with the general fund highlights. I'll spend a little bit of time on the general fund here. So the first slide that you see in front of you um, covers general fund revenue, exclusive of any transfers in from other funds. And what we're doing here is basically looking at um, the composition of general fund revenue by revenue source. So you can see there at the bottom, the two largest portions, the, um, the light blue or the grayish piece there, and then the, the dark blue on the right are your um, property taxes. The lighter bucket would be the non-residential, and then the darker bucket would be the residential uh, property tax revenue. So on a combined basis, those two amounts are going to comprise about 70% of the total general fund revenue. Um, and then you can see from there, it's really split between uh, the other items shown there, state sources, charges for service, and other miscellaneous items. Uh, just a couple of observations here. So overall, um, general fund revenue for fiscal 2012 um, would have been right around 7.6 million. Actually pretty stable to where your uh, general fund revenue was last year. Um, however, it was about $235,000 under what you would have budgeted for it to come in at, so there was a little bit of a shortfall there, and that would primarily relate to property tax revenues projected and also state share revenue that would have been projected. Here we'd still be looking at the general fund, um, just a different presentation though, and now looking at the five-year trend for each of those buckets that we would have presented on the previous slide. 
there, as I was saying, you can see for 2012, property taxes comprises right around 70%. And really, when we think of you know the composition of tax revenue, although the dollars have changed over the years and we've seen them come down, the breakout between the different categories has really been pretty stable over the past five years. Um, obviously, you can see there, property taxes is the biggest piece, followed by state, uh, state sources. And on the property tax specifically, the decline that you're seeing there um, over the five years represents a little over a million dollars in that five-year period decline in your property tax revenue or right around 16 percent. The state shared revenue, you did see a decline there from 2008 to 2011, um, about 15 percent drop during that period, um, but then fortunately there was a pickup here in 2012 with the census uh, results. Now moving on to general fund expenditures, also exclusive of transfers out to other funds, and similarly looking at uh, the same type of presentation that we would have for the revenue, so looking at the different uh, components that make up the general fund expenditures. And you can see there at the bottom that 44% or the majority of the expenditures would fall into the general government category, followed there in yellow by public safety, which comprises about 32%. And then you can see it's uh, split around um, the other items demonstrated. Again, a couple of observations here on general fund expenditures. So total expenditures for the year, fiscal year ended 2012, um, would be right around $7.7 .7 $7 million. Um, that is down quite a bit from last year, so I had said, you know, revenues were comparable to where you were in the prior fiscal year. Well, expenditures were down about half a million, you know, as management worked and, and you all worked together to really get some of those costs down uh, to even out your budget there. Uh, all in all, in terms of where you landed compared to your budget, um, you still would have been down from your budgeted results by about $160,000. So. You know, in both instances, um, you did fall a little bit short of budget expectations there, but weren't too far off. Now here we can see the five-year trend for general fund expenditures. And again, in terms of the, the percentages over the five years, um, pretty stable there. Uh, one thing that's probably worth noting is you do kind of see a, a spike in 2011. Um, for general government and public safety, which really doesn't fit the trend that you otherwise see. And so it's probably worth noting that that would be related to some um, pension and post-retirement health care funding uh, that the uh, council would have made a decision to, to fund during those years, or during that particular year, rather. So this is the uh, last slide that we have on the general fund. And this is showing the general fund fund balance um, over you know, an extended period here. The, the gray bar would represent um, the portions of the general fund fund balance that are earmarked or restricted for specific purposes. And then the yellow would be amounts that are dis the discretionary portion of your fund balance that can be spent at your discretion. Um, so, so really here you, you can see the trend is um, starting in 2004, um, you really did a phenomenal job in building up your fund balance uh, to a level that I don't think I've seen most people ever reach, uh, you know, the 46% level there, and really staying there for a couple years. Um, clearly, there has been some significant drop-offs in the last couple of years if you worked, as you've worked through your budget challenges, and particularly with the decline in property tax revenues that I just talked about. Um, but I guess just a couple of observations on that. So, you know, one thing that, that I would see as positive is that it's um, because you, you, know, you, you, you did what you did, you had the money there, you kind of had the cookie jar or the cash stored away that not everyone had. So you, you did plan and you did save for the rainy day. Uh, you know, when the rainy day came, it did obviously hit you really hard. And so, um, and so you've started dipping into that in the last two fiscal years. Uh, you know, I always equate it to, you know, a household budget. You can't live off your savings forever, right? So you build it up so that you have it and you use it when you need it. But obviously going forward now, it'd be, you know, figuring out how do you start to stabilize um, the level that you're at now. You probably wouldn't want to drop, you know, too far below that. I know that you don't have a formal fund balance target, but just in conversation, you know, that 16% would be around two months or so of operating expenditures in the general fund. So, you know, just from talking to management and understanding what your goals are informally, it sounds like you probably wouldn't want to drop too, too much further below that. So that would really be the goal 
you know, how do you kind of stabilize that out and try to keep it around that level going forward? Moving away now from the general fund and looking at um, capital investments being made by the city of Saline, um, we broke it out into three, you know, three areas. So first, um, general fixed assets, water and sewer capital improvements, and then capital improvements related to highways and streets. Um, so you can see there in 2012, there were some spikes in capital investments that were made. Um, just a couple of notes on what would be driving those changes. So with the general fixed assets, um, capital improvements related to uh, cemetery parks and the rec complex would comprise uh, the larger amounts you're seeing there in the current year. Water and sewer improvements were mostly water and sewer lines, but there was also some improvements here related to the, directly related to the road projects. And then in the, the last line item, the, the red bar there, highways and streets, that would be related to some local road projects that occurred during the, the fiscal year. So what this presentation does here now is it, it looks at all governmental funds of the city. So the general fund, um, your roads fund, so really all funds other than your water and sewer and component units would, would all be rolled into here. And in terms of the accounting, it would be on a basis that's a little bit different than your general fund, and the accounting for this full accrual uh, statement would be more similar to the accounting that you'd see in the private sector. So a little bit of different of accounting basis and then bringing all those, those funds together. But, you know, similar to when we just extract the general fund, you can see uh, largely made up of property tax revenues in the, um, the teal and the red buckets there. Uh, in that, in total, is about 55% of all governmental fund revenues. So not quite the 70% you see in the general fund, but still a significant portion of all, all governmental funds. Um, next would be in red, or, pardon me, in the blue there would be your charges for services. That would be the next biggest bucket, and a lot of that relates to user and program fees for the, the rec center. Still on the same basis of accounting, all governmental funds on this full accrual basis, um, and now looking at the expenses. So the largest, which would be in the um, dark blue there on the right bottom, 25%, followed by public safety there at 22% in the yellow. Um, and then streets and highways and wrecking culture right around 18 and 17 percent, so pretty close um, on those two. What I'll do now is I'm going to ask my colleague Nick to come up and cover the second half of our presentation. Uh, thank you, council members, and thank you, Mayor. I guess I'll just jump right into it. Uh, going to the next slide. Uh, this slide shows the total number of mills that are levied and collected by the city. Uh, what it demonstrates is that although the city collects, uh, levies and collects a, a significant amount of, of mills, only a certain portion of that actually stays with the city. So if we're looking at this graph of the 62 mills shown on the right, only the operating of 13.97 and the solid waste of 1.56 is revenue that's actually going to stay with the city. Uh, all of the other mills that are levied and collected are being remitted to other authorities such as the school or the county. Um, and then moving forward to the next slide. Bear with me. <laughs> all right. So as the previous slide showed, the composition of all the mills that were levied for the entire community. So uh, this slide right here shows just the year-by-year -year comparison of the city mills, which is just the operating and the solid waste debt again of 15.53. Uh, uh, as you can see with this graph, uh, it stayed pretty consistent over the past eight years. The city has uh, made it a point to, to keep keep millages down for to keep costs low for the residents and not increase the millage. Because if we look at the next slide, which compares the millages that the city assesses with the neighboring communities, and it also shows the excess levy capacity, which is 
the amount of mills that the city has the authority to levy, but um, again, chooses not to to keep costs down to the residents as much as possible. Um, as Alicia mentioned, however, uh, the general fund fund balance has been decreasing over the past couple years, and because of that, uh, this excess levy capacity is a route you could take to levy to bring in excess revenue to kind of uh, combat the decrease in the fund balance. Uh, moving forward, uh, this slide shows the composition of the total taxable value by the type of property. There are two main points to take from this slide. Uh, the first being just the overall decrease in the taxable value from 2009 to 2013. Uh, as we can see, 2009 was 493 million. Uh, 2013 was all the way down to 435 million, which again has, has caused the decrease in revenue leading to a higher strain on uh, fund balance overall. Uh, the other thing to take out of this is the percentage that makes up the personal property taxes. Uh, I'm going to kind of leave it at that because when Martin gets up here and discusses the management letter, he is going to talk about um, potential implications of, of pending state legislature that may affect how personal property tax is treated or, or if it goes. Um, so the next slide. Uh, this slide shows the taxable value as compared to the state equalized value. Uh, the taxable value is just that. It's the true taxable value of all the properties in the community, whereas the state equalized value is the amount that can actually be assessed upon. Uh, because of the drop in taxable value over the past couple years, the state taxable or the state equalized value has actually uh, closed the gap a little bit. So the foregone re revenue has been decreasing and, and is about at $109,000 uh, for the 2012 year. Uh, moving forward, the next slide, state shared revenue. Uh, this slide shows the actual state shared revenue that the city has received uh, and it is compared with the city's projections of what state shared revenue would have been given uh, there were no tax cuts to the state shared revenue, or there were no cuts to the state shared revenue that the state gave. Uh, in 2000, they uh, changed the, the calculation of how that was and began many, making cuts to the statutory portion of the state shared revenue. So this just shows the, the effect of what that those cuts were, and as we can see, there's about $500,000 worth of revenue that is being lost because of those cuts, which uh, compared with the decrease in property tax values is leading to less revenue for the city and a higher strain on fund balance. Going forward, uh, the next two slides, uh, just so the sh snapshots of the water and the sewer funds. Uh, the results we are seeing in these funds are, are due to the city's realignment of the water and sewer rates. Uh, in 2011, the city decreased the sewer rates and increased the water rates of just about the same uh, to, to even out the fund balances that were in those funds. Uh, so as we can see, as we look at this slide, the water fund is showing operating income of about $620,000 to increase that fund balance. And on the next slide, the sewer fund, we're showing an operating deficit of 74,000. Uh, again, this was intentional to use the fund balance that had built up throughout time. Uh, moving forward, the next slide. Uh, the pension slide shows the actuarial value of the assets and the liabilities of the pension fund based on the most recent actuarial valuation, which was as of December 31st, 2010. Um, it's a, a, a little outdated, but the city is in the process of getting a new actuarial valuation, which uh, should be received sometime at the end of this year or early next year. And then that will revalue the assets, revalue liabilities to determine um, just exactly what the city is going to need to contribute towards the pension. And the last slide that we have uh, is just an ad some additional information that shows the breakout of revenues by the reporting units. Uh, the, the total revenue matches up with the financial statements, but again, it just shows a little more detail of, 
of what buckets the revenue is coming from. So it's just a little more information to tie out the revenue. Uh, so with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Martin so we can touch on the manifest. letter. The last item we were going to cover, as mentioned earlier, the management letter, which is about a six or seven page document. It is broken up into a couple of different sections uh, I want to point out. Uh, First section are, uh, is comprised of communication required and it says 114. So in uh, non-accounting terms, uh, it's basically a response letter to the letter that you would have received before the audit, basically telling you how the audit went. There were any issues uh, identified during the audit process, any disagreements with management, uh, just basically how the overall audit process went. Uh, I did want to mention that we didn't have any issues or any disagreements or anything like that uh, during the audit, as alluded to earlier, and uh, basically, the audit went as planned. Section two uh, refers to other recommendations. As I, as I always say, accountants are pretty picky, so they always, you know, we always try and find something to potentially improve upon or something to point out that could be done at the city. So a couple of different things. Uh, payroll agency fund, I know we've discussed it historically, um, especially with the cutbacks at the city. Uh, it's one of those uh, things that does seem um, it's, it's, it's a lot of burden on the, uh, in order to maintain. So in order to maybe streamline some of the processes, this could be one area to focus on and perhaps actually doing away with the payroll fund and uh, recording the payroll in the funds themselves. Uh, outstanding receivables, I know we've talked about this uh, over the last few years and it's been definitely a concern of the council. Uh, there's a little over $250,000 from, uh, with a receivable from the state uh, that has not been collected uh, upon over the years. Uh, the good news is after the year end, there was about $108,000 that was collected. The city's still working on collecting the rest of it. Um, and my understanding is that the latest report is it's, it's in process. Administrative cost allocations. So uh, one of the things that we discussed is just overall the stress uh, that the general fund has been incurring over the years. Uh, and I know you've built, built up the fund balance a few years back, uh, but one of those uh, things that as a recommendation that we have is taking a look at the administrative costs that you're charging other funds uh, just from the responsibilities of um, what um, the different departments that are in the general fund. So if there's you know, billings that are done for water and sewer, different areas that you can potentially charge a little bit more to those funds where the resources are, are not as limited as the general fund. Again, just taking a look at the allocation and making sure that it makes sense. Uh, my understanding is it hasn't been done in a little while, so just something to take a look at, ma making sure that you're charging the right amounts. And the last item is regarding information technology. We do look at your uh, IT systems uh, during the audit process. And one of the things that we notice is that um, there's really no formal, I guess, documentation uh, removing excess of retired or terminated employees. So making sure that those that have no, are no longer with the city no longer have access to your uh, computer system. And then the last item uh, is comprised of section three, which is uh, basically legislative items and things that are going on around the state. I'm gonna hit on the main items that um, I believe would impact the city the most. If there's any other items that you wanted me to touch upon and go into a little bit more details, I'd be happy to do so tonight or even another night, that'd be fine too. Uh, so first item is budgetary stress. Uh, both Alicia and Nick uh, talked about just your fund balance overall, which is about 16% of your expenditures. And then if you look at your property tax is decreasing over the years, as well as your state share revenues. Clearly, you've incurred quite a bit of stress over the years. Um, and then trying to cut back expenses and things like that. So one thing is I want to commend the council and the management team on doing a great job over the years because, I mean, clearly it's a very difficult thing to do. But also the, the thing that what we encourage the, the city to do is make sure you plan ahead and keep budgeting, not just even one year in advance or even two years in advance. I would you know, go five years in advance, making sure you have the necessary funds that, you know, to operate the city at the general fund. Revenue sharing, uh, there have been some good things coming up from uh, Lansing that revenue sharing is going up a little bit. So that's always a good thing. Um, the concern is, as we saw s some of the slides before, there is that huge gap from years past. So in order to get that recovery, it's, it's not gonna be overnight anything, uh, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight at all. So I just want to caution the city and just making sure you project out and make sure you keep checking on what the revenues are going to be. Again, there is a slight increase over the next uh, year and it's hopefully it's going to continue on. On uh, 
page 8, 9, and 10 of the letter. Uh, basically, it talks about the EVIP um, and just the requirements that the city needs to comply in order to uh, make sure that EVIP uh, payments are received. Uh, the last or the first deadline for the new EVIP program was October 1st, which was met. And then there's a couple other deadlines, February 1st and June 1st. Uh, so it just kind of talks about the details of what the um, what those plans need to entail. If there's any help that's needed from Plant Moran, we'd be happy to assist in any of those uh, filing deadlines. I did want to mention too is um, on page 10 at the bottom, the payment timing uh, has changed a little bit from last year. So one of those things that um, I think that the state was a little bit more forgiving in the past, that if you missed a deadline, if you still submit an EVIP, you might still be able to get a little bit of it. Um, well, not so much going forward. So if you miss a deadline for filing uh, the information, you will actually miss out on a portion of the payment. The payments are actually broken up into two payments each. There's six in total. So before it would have been three, it's now you get six. So if you missed the first deadline, for example, if you had missed the October 1st deadline, which you did not, but if you had missed it, you'd miss out on the October 31st payment. But as long as you submitted the information, you still make the December 31st payment. The hot topic that I know the city has been talking about for years uh, now, and especially the last year or so, is the potential elimination of personal property taxes. So clearly a significant proposal. Uh, the city itself uh, has currently, uh, the, the revenue is about $768,000. So very significant dollar amount. Uh, it actually, if you look at your unassigned fund balance in the general fund, it, I, I believe it comp comprises about 70% of that. So clearly a significant uh, revenue source for the city. Uh, majority of it has been promised that there's other avenues of kind of recovering that money and that the state's going to make you whole or at least within a very small percentage. But it's, it's one of those things that until we see it, we can't really believe it. So I definitely encourage the city to um, plan accordingly, I guess, for uh, future. Uh, my understanding is that plans are supposed to come through uh, in the next month or so uh, from the state but it's been one of those things that has been talked about for quite some time, so I'm not sure how soon changes are gonna really take effect um, on the personal property taxes. Uh, there, are, um, there is a phase out period, or I guess for certain property taxes, so it's supposed to be over a few uh, extended period of time, but uh, again, it's just one of those things that we definitely caution the city in monitoring and making sure that you take that into, uh, into your plans, into your budgets. And then the last couple items are, um, I guess, for your information. And one thing I do want to point out, even though we do have the information on a deficit elimination plan on one of the last pages of the management letter, uh, you do not have any deficits in the funds currently. But it's just one of those things that the state has changed the laws. Um, and I want to make sure that you're aware that if there was a deficit, uh, the deficit elimination plan needs to be filed with the state by the time the report or the financial statement is submitted to the state. So it's, uh, historically, it's been one of those things that the state would notify you after the report was uh, received, and, and they would uh, ask you for the deficit elimination plan. Nowadays, it's, they're expecting it within the t same timing as the financial statements are prepared or submitted to the state. So that is it for the presentation. I don't know if you have any questions or anything. I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions. And again, uh, if you happen to have any questions uh, further down the line, we'd be happy to come back or you know, meet, whether with the council or even individually. Mr. Roth? I do have a question, and I, I want to thank you for an excellent report and hard work you put into it. But looking into the future with the Obama health care plan, how is that going to affect us, and how can we plan ahead for budgeting? What, what, what might our cost be as being an employer? So as the employer, there's definitely, a, to be honest, there's a lot of uncertainties. Uh, from the perspective of, especially like the retiree health, uh, the OPEB liability that you have, my understanding what everyone's saying is that that could actually potentially decrease one day. So that could help. Uh, from the employer's perspective, uh, to be honest, right now we're working through the, like what the effects will be, and it depends on every single employer. So it depends on the size, uh, it depends on um, your circumstances in particular, but again, it's, it's one of those things that right now, I, I do have to say that we don't know the true effect that they would have on the city. I just, I'll just jump, real quick sure. jump in. I, I had a conversation you need to come to the microphone, please. I just wanted to add in, you know, a lot of our folks that are studying 
um, the Health Care Reform Act have kind of been sitting on the sidelines waiting to see what was going to happen with the elections before they started diving in really deep. So as they start diving in now and there's communication made available, we'll certainly make sure to get that out to management and council, you know, as we kind of start to understand it better ourselves as well. It is a work in progress, so. And one of the things, too, that uh, is one hot discussion is just what's going to happen over the next month or so. Because um, I think there's going to be a lot of negotiations, I think, between the Republicans and Democrats. So um, there may be some changes coming from, because right now we're looking at, you know, significantly higher uh, income tax rates, uh, the Obama plan coming in, just a lot of changes coming into uh, uh, in Washington. So there might be a lot of negotiations. So some things may not even come into fruition, uh, and we'll find that out hopefully in the next three or four weeks. Does anybody have any questions about the financial statements? Mm -mm. No? Okay, any questions about anything else? Okay, thanks a lot, um, all of you. We really appreciate your work with the city and helping us work through. And I know I'd like to also commend the uh, Treasurer's Department for doing a great job assisting. I know the audit's a lot, and we have been working through a lot of different issues. So appreciate all your time and your help on all different levels that you've provided to the city. So, thank you. Thank you. Just as a side note, too, I would like to say, uh, Gretchen, I know it's the last presentation that we have uh, with you as mayor, so thank you very much. And I know Brian's going to do a great job, so uh, just thank you. Great. Thank you. Next, we have citizen comments on agenda items under the Open Meetings Act. Any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question on items that appear on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. <clears throat> Mary Hess, letter submitted at last council meeting and requested to be read. Dear Mayor and Council Members, I am requesting the City Superintendent, City Attorney, and City Manager enforce the replacement of sidewalk on South Harris Street side of Phillips m and Auto Service at 200 East Michigan Avenue as required by Article 4, Sidewalk Construction and Repair, Section 74-186, duty to maintain sidewalks in the municipal code which states all sidewalks in the city shall be kept and maintained in good order and repaired by owner agent or occupant of the land building or premises adjacent to and abutting upon the same likewise notify the business owners of this responsibility under section 74188, notice regarding repair. It shall be the duty of the city superintendent to order such repair to be made by written or printed notice to repair the same within seven days. Repairs will be made to the sidewalk shall conform to section 76-70 minimum concrete and bituminous concrete desire requirements. Number five, commercial and industrial approaches. As there is a serious liability for injury on this public sidewalk due to its extreme state of disrepair under section 74-189, failure to repair by the city assessment of cost. It shall be to the duty of the city superintendent to maintain or cause repairs to be made and to order and prevent further damage. Parking on the public sidewalk should be prohibited and the city enforcement to be done in section 1305 off street parking lot design and construction where necessary to prevent encroachment upon pedestrian safety or damaging requiring landscape, wheel stops shall be provided. No portion of a parking space and or maneuvering aisle shall obstruct or encroach upon a public sidewalk. After I left uh, Mr. Roth, I uh, questioned uh, the legal responsibility of council. 
council is uh, could be said to be derelict in their service if they do not have their attorney answer these questions. Thank you. Should other citizen comment? Uh, the following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion or with the request of any citizen or council member. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Memorial sec second Girba. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Under unfinished business item 12160, this is a treasurer's office restructuring proposed ordinance number 746 and 747. It's a motion to acknowledge receipt of city manager Campbell's October 11th, 2012 memo as amended to acknowledge receipt and, and reading of ordinance number 746, an ordinance to amend the Saline city code fixing the current compensation of the city treasurer to approve and adopt or not adopt said ordinance number 746 as submitted to authorize or not authorize the mayor, city clerk, and city manager to execute the revised employment agreement with Ms. Bennett for this new salary. Do we have a motion? So move to approve and adopt and authorize. Second. Move road, second Peters. Approve and adopt and authorize. Discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> item B, this would be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the September 18th, 2012 memo from City Treasurer Bennett regarding ordinance change to acknowledge receipt and reading of ordinance number 747 and ordinance to revise division six, treasurer of chapter two, administration, article three, officers and employees of the city of Saline, to revise the duties and responsibilities of the city treasurer and to repeal division and eight accounting supervisor to approve it and adopt or not adopt said ordinance number 747 as submitted. Move to approve and adopt. Second. Move here by second tomorrow. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 1234, wastewater treatment plant improvements, the water rate study. This is a motion to acknowledge receive the WWTP rehabilitation study from Tetra Tech, dated October 20, actually, October, what was the date? October 1st, was it? October 2012. Which is general. October 2012 and then November. First 2012 staff memo regarding improvements to the wastewater treatment plan. <clears throat> Move to acknowledge receipt. Second. Move Gearbaugh, second Terhar. Discussion. Mr. Uh, Campbell, you want to speak to this? Sure, well, I'll very briefly, I'll turn it over to Gary, but um, the, the uh, real rehabilitation study, uh, you may recall, was at discussed uh, at a uh, work session, um, a couple work sessions um, in great detail and, and uh, well, I can not just summarize them in great detail, the uh, proposed improvements at uh, pollution control facility uh, here in Saline. So um, Mr. Rubel is, uh, I should say Gary Rubel, because we have two Mr. Rubels here, one for uh, Tetra Tech as well. Uh, but, but Gary um, has put together some information as well I'll turn it over to him. Okay, Mr. Rubel. Thank you. Um, I've uh, <clears throat> composed a one-page summary to uh, start out the, uh, the actions tonight. Um, there are uh, five separate actions uh, shown as parts A, B, C, D, and E in the agenda. And uh, the first part being receipt of the uh, Tetra Tech proposal, uh, which I'm sure you all have a bound copy. And uh, the uh, bound report is the culmination of approximately uh, 11 months to 12 months of staff working with both city council and with our consultants at Tetra Tech uh, in order to uh, show uh, what we need to do to address some of the immediate needs and near future needs of uh, deficiencies that have built up over the years at the wastewater treatment facility. And so what you see here is the final version based on information shared and, and uh, uh, certainly displayed uh, uh, from our work sessions with staff at Detra Tech and also with the city council through a work session that Mr. Campbell mentioned. Um, 
here tonight to represent uh, uh, Tetra Tech are, are two individuals uh, responsible for uh, drafting the uh, uh, three proposals tonight, um, Mr. Uh, Tom Alba and uh, Mr. Brian Rubel. And uh, they in turn will uh, address uh, parts uh, B, uh, C, D, and E. Uh, as you notice in the uh, uh, summary memo <clears throat> that I've drafted, I've g given the brief history of events that have occurred since uh, uh, January 2012. And uh, uh, we also list a summary of uh, the uh, three proposals here. Um, if all three proposals are approved tonight, uh, we eventually would uh, enter into uh, uh, engineering agreements uh, that would be the sum total of about $272,300. Now that would take us uh, all the way from uh, the, the planning uh, phase to uh, uh, grant application and uh, uh, obtaining the grant phase, uh, doing further analysis on the building cracks and uh, assembling all of the bid proposal, which would include the detailed plans, specifications, uh, certainly an extensive uh, uh, duty of getting permits from the DEQ and going through the DEQ permit review process, uh, which is a pretty strenuous effort in itself. But uh, Tetra Tech has consistently displayed their ability to work with the DEQ to obtain the permits and to uh, deliver a successful project. Um, the, uh, tet as I mentioned, the Tetra Tech staff uh, tonight will uh, cover more detail uh, parts B, C, D, and E. Uh, I also attached uh, to my cover memo, uh, you'll see a chart showing the wastewater treatment plant excerpt <coughs> from the worksheet that we sort of hit on uh, just a, a little bit at our uh, prior work session on capital improvements. And what I've highlighted here is uh, at, in the top in green is the current rehabilitation initiative and the cost for that. And then after that, we show near future projects, some of which uh, were mentioned in the study and others which are proposed to, to be addressed through a capital improvement plan for, let's say, the next five or six years. And so um, after we address the current needs, uh, at that point, we will look at future budgets to address uh, needs for FY 14, 15, 16 through 18. And then lastly in the attachment is a, uh, a map of the water and sewer service area. Um, the question came up at our work session uh, on this uh, rehabilitation program about um, what is included within our water and service area. So I uh, look back at the com computer models that we established in 96 and 1999 for studying the west central and east belt sewers and through, uh, and this also matches what we have in our master plan and what we determine to be the service area, which is what is in the current corporate limits and which is in the purple line. And then the red line indicates those areas that uh, we consider within a reachable annexation without going into the, the urban growth areas set in the Saline Township and the Lodi Township master plans. Um, and so our, our studies, our capacities are based on the existing and potential, not, not, not only the vacant lands within the city, but the vacant lands in the red areas. And so uh, with that, um, I would uh, then entertain any questions you had on the cover letter or any of the attachments, if you had those. And at this point, we would, uh, if you want to take a motion on on uh, an approval of, of A, I, I believe that I took a motion, sorry. Uh, and then we would uh, start into uh, item B, uh, the proposal for the design services, uh, which would be uh, discussed with uh, Mr. Tom Alba. Okay, so we did have a work session at the last meeting regarding this issue, and I know that there were some questions that some council members had as Mr. Rubel said, he answered some of them in this memo, but I think it would be helpful if anybody has questions at this point in time, in summary, uh, to talk about wh why we're doing this, what the needs are, um, 
I don't know if any council members have that. Any questions from the work session that they'd like to bring forward or <clears throat> no? Mr. Yerba? Yeah, I don't have any concerns about what we were talking about because I believe these work, this needs to be done. We need to do this work. We're at that point in time. Um, just raising the question of bidding, and I know we have, we're up making this recommendation. Um, please kind of explain to us why we wouldn't want to try and propose this as a more formal bid to have other companies potentially bid for this and explain why we were specifically going with Tetra Tech. Okay. Uh, I did add in the cover letter about the, we, we have a current agreement with uh, Tetra Tech to, uh, who had to perform the, the current analysis, do a study of the needs and present this report tonight. They also prevented, presented the proposals there. But the reasons we use Tetra Tech were, were outlined earlier in that earlier action that we took uh, back in March. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they are the ones who have performed our last several rate studies. They have performed since 1999, not only the design for the improvements and analysis for the improvements, but for uh, additional, re ad additional reevaluation of, uh, I think 2009 was the rehabilitation plan uh, that was uh, completed for us by Tet Tetra Tech. So they have retained not only the knowledge, but also the, um, uh, you know, the familiarity with it so that uh, we know that if we went out to uh, other consultants, we have to basically start over from scratch and sort of reinvent the wheel okay. of the historical and institutional knowledge that are accumulated on file and the information on file. Plus, they have built into the proposals the fact that they retained the knowledge, uh, the data, uh, prior records that they've used in studies for grant applications and permits. So basically, it's easier and more economical for them to regurgitate this stuff out of existing files. And so uh, we, we recognize that it, if you bring someone else in, then you're dealing with a total unknown quantity, and you have to, and staff has to sit down, and we have to regurgitate. It would be a long, drawn-out process and, and likely cost more. Yeah, and that's the reason why I had to explain to our taxpayers why we're going yeah. this route without going yeah. that fact, because basically we would incur an additional cost beyond what would make this feasible. Right. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Are there further questions on the motion to acknowledge receipt? One, one more question. Mr. Peters. Mr. That, last time we spoke about the uh, treatment plant, we identified some sort of uh, lower priority type jobs. Uh, I think some demolition of existing equipment and, and some subsidence issues. Are those all inclusive? Are those in, included in the uh, $272,000 um, study? Well, I'll let Mr. Alba answer that when we get to Part B. Okay. I mean, that's probably a better place to, to deal with that issue because that gets into what's involved with the bid and the work plan. Okay. So my understanding, because I sort of tried the hook and it didn't get picked up, is that your plan is to outline in further detail through um, Tetra Tech uh, what exactly we're talking about doing here? Because we had a work session, I'd like mm -hmm. to. So we're going to use that and really get into, okay. Right, good. now the, the area map shows the facilities that where some of the work will occur. And within the, the work improvement study, uh, Mr. Tombaugh will, will list the five components areas and maybe answer the, uh, which will probably answer the question that Mr. Peters <coughs> had. All right, I just want to make sure our citizens understand what we're doing here. Correct. Instead of just right. talking about a design, you know. Right, we'll, uh, Mr. Ta Mr. Alba will okay. cover the main five points. I don't know if it was in this motion right now or you want to break it out in, by, by motion, it sounds like. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Is there a further motion on the uh, motion to acknowledge receipts? Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> okay. Uh, item B, this is a motion to acknowledge receipt of the October 30th, 2012 letter from Tetra Tech regarding improvements to the city wastewater treatment plant, engineering services proposal for design and bidding to approve or not approve Tetra Tech's proposal in the amount of $87,400 for design, bidding, and evaluation of the wastewater treatment plant phase one improvements, which includes monitoring the building movement, and to authorize or not authorize the city manager to sign the acceptance of their proposal date October 30th, 2012. Move to approve and authorize. Second. Move Marl, second to hard to approve and authorize. Mr. Rua, I understand that you'd like Mr. Allah to speak now? 
And you're uh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Driscoll, members of the council. Uh, you have had some exposure to this subject matter through uh, through working sessions and stuff like that, and uh, uh, and you now have a bound copy of the report that I think everybody's had an opportunity to to uh, read. I hope, and we discussed it. So, I and I thought what I would do is just kind of very brief overview of what we did for the study, what the conclusions were. Uh, and, and then what is included in the in the proposal for engineering services, if that sounds that be great. Uh, like it would cover things. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, um, the purpose of the study was to evaluate the current condition of, of certain parts of the pollution control facility, and it, it's not about expansion or increase in capacity or any, anything like that. It's about reliability, safety, uh, and, and maintaining the, the good working condition of the existing facility. Uh, and in, in doing that, we actually categorized the things that we found into three different groupings. One is, is things that were, were called immediate needs. Those are things that, that should be done in order, as I say, to maintain the reliability of the facility. It's, wastewater plants are, are kind of out of sight and out of mind, but the law requires that they work every day uh, and, that, and that they work well. So uh, some of these immediate need things are, are necessary in order to maintain that level of reliability. In addition to that, we found some other things that are, um, I was going to say nice but not necessary. I, th I think they're nice. They really are necessary, but they're not immediate. So, so we kind of categorized those as, as farther down the road. And, and uh, Councilman Peters, some of those, some of those things um, to, to demolish, to, some, of, some of them are, are constructible improvements. Some of them are, as, as you suggest, the demolition of things that have been there for a really long time and, and now constitute a nuisance instead of a, a, a part of the operating facility. The third category is, is um, we did discover an area that was part of the original study that, that really needs additional evaluation, and, and that is the, the whole matter of settlement in, in one of these old buildings. The, the wastewater plant has been there for a really long time. It's been improved a few times. It's been expanded. And in recent years, it's become apparent that there is settlement or movement in the digester building. And uh, one of the things that we looked at carefully during the study was how that was happening, what, what was causing that to happen. And I think we've identified pretty closely or, or, or pretty refined, in a pretty refined fashion, what has happened, what has moved. Uh, what we were unable to determine was exactly why that happened. And, and because of that, we can't really prescribe a, a nearly certain fix either. So the third category is things that require a little additional improvement and or a little additional study. And, and I'll uh, describe what that might mean when I talk about the, uh, the proposal. The, uh, the things in, included in the immediate needs are mostly related to the management of residuals or, or biosolids. It is uh, mostly about ensuring the reliable operation of the anaerobic digesters, which take sludge from the plant and uh, and render it safe for disposal on, on land and, and reuse. Uh, it involves the replacement of mixing equipment in those tanks. It, it's the replacement of valves and pumps to make the operation for uh, the treatment plant staff be more reliable and, and more certain. Um, there is a boiler that requires, or that, that's required for heating the digesters and a gas fuel system that goes with that. Those things have reached the end of their useful life and should be replaced. Um, and the other thing that's in there is, is a, a requirement of the, uh, of the discharge permit is that the dissolved oxygen and the effluent from the plant reach a certain level at all times. And although it almost always does, there, there are some small improvements to, uh, to help ensure the reliability of that. And those are uh, um, the biggest items in, in this initial, I'll call it the initial construction project. Um, future endeavors uh, are um, to provide a, a replacement system for the equipment that's used to handle septage. Um, Saline is one of the uh, two public facilities in Washtenaw County that actually receive septage. Uh, it is a, uh, it's a public service. It's also a revenue source for the city. And uh, there is equipment that was installed 12 or, 12 or 15 years ago. Um, and it, it also, it's, this, is, this is hazardous duty for, for process equipment, and it's also reached the end of its useful life. So a, uh, 
Bob and the guys at the uh, at the facility are, are making do now. Uh, but a, a next series of improvements should probably include uh, better and, and more reliable septic handling systems. And, and in addition to that, a, a future project would have some uh, rehabilitation around the site, the replacement of walks and, and uh, stairs and things that have kind of fallen apart with age over a period of time. Um, the proposal that we provided council for uh, for engineering services to go into construction is uh, um, also in, in several parts, but there's a design phase, and, and the design is strictly to cover those items that are identified in, in the study as immediate needs. So those are those improvements to the digester area, to the gas handling system, the boiler, the replacement of pumps and valves and stuff like that. Um, and that is, uh, um, well, okay, so that the design is to prepare construction documents and uh, suitable for obtaining competitive bids and also to submit those construction documents and a permit application to the uh, the state to get a permit to build those things. So uh, the uh, the design and the bidding phase are included in this proposal. And in addition to that, um, we've included some effort to follow up on the building settlement issue. So included in the design phase of this is an additional $11,500 to very carefully um, measure the, the potential movement of the building. We're, we're going to uh, uh, to use a geotechnical subconsultant to help us with that. We're going to install some instrumentation to monitor the very small degree of movement that we think will be there. We'll also take some subsurface samples around the footings of a wall that we suspect is moving and, uh, and as a result come back to council with a much more definitive uh, recommendation about how to uh, arrest the movement of the building in place. Um, the third thing that's included in that, uh, uh, in, in the proposal is services during construction. And I, I think Councilman Gearbaugh was, um, I think, wondering about whether, you know, why that needed to be included in the engineering services proposal now. Uh, one of the, the only thing that I would add, I thought uh, uh, Mr. Robles' um, explanation was perfectly good. Uh, all of these things um, are presented to council as as time and materials uh, or, or um, level of effort with not to exceed limitations. So uh, the services that you get and, and, and that you pay for are only those that are required to get the job done. Uh, if we can do it for less, and, and as Gary says, we've done lots of work here, uh, we certainly will. Uh, if it takes more effort than that, there, there is a cap, and uh, then it becomes our problem. So uh, if that's of, of any comfort. Yes, thanks. And that, that's, uh, unless there are questions, that was kind of the summary of, of the proposal for engineering services. Would it make sense? To, to continue and, and look at the other things that we provided proposals for now, or are we going to handle those individually? Do we? Um, actually, we were just talking. Um, well, I think it would be helpful to do it all, actually, because okay. I wasn't totally comfortable with moving a motion without having all the facts before. Okay. Me. And really, we should have all the facts and then move the motions as we work through, and then questions can arise. So. Um, I think it would be helpful to actually hit on the other two also. Okay. And then you want to come up? Brian, Brian Rubel is going to talk about um, other associated issues, the, uh, the S2 grant and, uh, uh, and rate study. Yes. Th thank you, Tom, and good evening. Uh, associated with uh, the design project uh, is perhaps a rate study. Uh, I think we can all envision that the, a capital project will consume quite a bit of uh, the city's uh, uh, fund balance to, uh, to construct. So it, it's wise to perhaps consider looking at a, a rate study concurrently with that project. Uh, you last did a rate study in 2009, and uh, Tetra Tech had the privilege of assisting you with that. Uh, the construction, should you wish to pay for it in cash, would be a, a fairly significant <coughs> amount of your balance. It would still leave some. And actually, when I went back and looked at the 2009 rate study, uh, the assumption was that uh, you would actually use some of that balance uh, in place of higher rates, uh, both in this year and next year. So you're, you'd be kind of compounding uh, the problem or, or the concern with your balance by 
by doing both without at least evaluating the rates to determine if in fact they are at the appropriate level to to keep up with uh, the demands on the uh, on the revenue stream so uh, we did submit a proposal to assist you with a rate study not only on the wastewater uh, side but on the water side as well it, it, we, we, we definitely encourage communities to look at both at the same time because uh, that is what your residents, your, your users see is, is a single bill and so looking at both at the same time uh, certainly makes sense. So we've, we've submitted to you a scope of work to do that and uh, I, I think I can report both the scope and the fee are identical to what they were in 2009 when we last uh, assisted you with that. So that's the rate study uh, proposal that you have in place. And, and then since your last uh, work session, we, we have met with staff and gone over a grant fund that the state of Michigan has in place called the S2 grant fund. That was originally initiated in the, mid, uh, the, the middle of the last decade uh, with $40 million that went very quickly uh, to communities throughout Michigan. It was very popular. It was dormant for a number of years. And then in 2011, uh, the state legislature brought that back with another $40 million. They went through that again quickly and in, uh, pumped another $40 million into it. So of that $80 million that uh, has been established in the last year or so, about $10 million of it remains. And that grant program, again, assists communities with the planning and design costs for uh, sewer system projects, wastewater and sewer system projects. So it will help offset some, many of the costs uh, that we've talked about that are in front of you tonight. It's a 90% uh, grant, so the state will pay 90% of that cost, 10% uh, of it is the match, so you pay close to 10 cents on the dollar. The grant program is actually wrapped into the loan, the low interest loan program, the state revolving fund program. It's tied into that. So the state actually does require, you, require uh, communities to prepare a, a a report called a project plan report that itemizes all the needs that you have at a, a on your wastewater system and then you, you're, you're actually entering the loan program but you do not have to proceed with the loan should you wish to pay for it out of cash but you do have to do the report first they will make grant funds available for that report they will actually even reimburse you for the cost of applying for the grant so uh, they have made that part fairly friendly so it's a fairly complex process, but uh, the steps would be that you would need to apply for the grant. And again, there's $10 million left. We think most of that will go by, by January. That's the projections they've given to us. Uh, there is some legisla legislation making its way through to pump more money into that next year, but I can only speak to what's there right now. It's $10 million. Um, so you have to apply for the application. Then you have to, once you get uh, funded, you will prepare a project plan should you wish to go through this program. And then once you get the project plan approved, you would be eligible to get reimbursed for the design costs. So there's several steps along the way. Your first step would be getting the application in by January, and then soon after January, we'd work on that project plan. And by having, there's another benefit to having the project plan in place. In, even if, uh, you know, even if you didn't get the grant this time or, or actually has value beyond this project, by having all the needs you have, say, in the next 10 to 20 years at the plant, then you can just call upon this document in the future to help you with future funding or loan programs should you desire to do that. So the septage system that Tom mentioned in a future year would be very easy to tap than the low interest loan funding because it will be in this report and on file with the state. I know Bob also has, Mr. Skull has uh, needs with uh, filters at the wastewater plant. We could include those in the plan. And again, you, could, you would very easily be able to apply for a future loan once that's on file. So there is value just beyond this project should you wish to go through that grant program. And I think the last item on the agenda is simply a resolution that is re a required part of the grant. So should you wish to desire that, uh, go through the grant program, you do need to pass a resolution as a council um, authorizing the application to be submitted. That's simply all that e is, so. Okay, we have questions. Mr. Hart, did you have some questions? Yes, I had one question uh, regarding Part B. Um, certainly the, the realization that the parts of the plan are at the end of their useful life is, is compelling. Um, to move forward, one of the things you didn't mention tonight that we discussed at the work session is is the associated safety issues. 
um, related to the condition of some of the equipment. And I think, for me at least, that adds to the compelling reasons to move forward with this project um, in an expeditious manner. So I wondered if you would um, just talk about that a little bit so that um, people who are here and also seeing this on TV could also have okay. that information. Uh, certainly. Um, the uh, uh, wastewater treatment plant is, is, a, is a very industrial kind of facility, and, and you guys have got uh, full-time employees who are down there uh, every day working. Uh, this particular project, uh, I mean, every project has got safety aspects. This particular project uh, has special safety aspects in that the, the process which stabilizes sludge, that's what goes on in these anaerobic digesters, actually um, generates a, a usable gas. It, it, digester gas is about 65% methane and 35% carbon dioxide. And, and that gas, the, the good news is the gas is, is usable for not only heating the digesters but heating buildings. Uh, the, the other side of that particular issue, though, is that the, the gas can be hazardous. And uh, there, there is a gas system down there now. That gas system has uh, actually reached and in some instances exceeded its, uh, its usable life. And, and there are components which actually leak. And, and it's like a, a gas leak of any other kind in your house or any place else. Uh, it, it does represent a, a, a real hazard to the, to the treatment plant itself and to the personnel who are down there. So uh, that in particular, those, that part of this project is, is very much related to the health and safety of, uh, of the city's employees who work at the facility. Okay. Thank you. Sure. The other thing, just because, and, and uh, uh, Thinking about the S2 grant and, 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 and the project plan that goes with it, um, the other thing that you get is that the, the, um, there, there are grant funds for the design of this project, which are available. By having the project plan in place, you'd be eligible for, for grant funds for the design of, uh, of future projects as well. So as long as, as the program persists and as funds are available. So, anyway. Other questions for us? Mr. Roth. I have a question in regards to Section B, can it, we have discussion on that? Sure, yeah, just, I think or, we're I mean, to do all of it. All of it? Okay, this is regards to C. When you're doing the rate study, are you going to include any rate study for the septage handling? In theory, I'd like to see that rate cover the cons lots of the construction in the future phase far as 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 re re relocating the spot as it is now, the metering system and so on. So I'd like to see that be self-sufficient instead of additional cost to, to the city. Okay, I think I understand your question. I, I don't believe we have that itemized per se, <coughs> but uh, my, uh, I believe we could handle that certainly as part of a, a scope item to, to look at the to revenue and the cost. Instead of adding extra costs so we can do that, but. Uh, are we ever going to recover ourselves on it? I think that would be very uh, easy to provide you some um, calculations of that. So. Mr. Gearbaugh. And just in connection with that, I just want to make sure that the rate study will include how we handle um, water recharge and sewer recharge for non-city properties, any properties that are receiving services. That all, are not all, all users would be included in the rate oh, study. Just yes. want to verify that. Mr. Campbell. Madam Mayor, I think, at Bob, I believe at the work session we talked about uh, the, the, the payback period. That's for, payback period in, the, to in the, um, um, for the sludge, the septage receiving. Um, yes, we did. The, um, last year we, we earned about $250,000 on septage. So it's very profitable. There was about well, this year we had the tank cleaned out, which was an expense, but we have that every seven years. So I figured the payback period on the septage receiving will probably be less than three years, uh, considering having a metering system, a card swipe, which will make billing easier. They, they prepay versus having to chase them down and, and get the money from them, um, as well as just safety issues, uh, more reliability. I've, I've got a question then. When will this phase start? That we're talking about where does it fit it that's change? a really good question it looks like it's going to be not the first phase second or third they can look if my reading right this is the second phase i'm just wondering why don't we start earlier if it's going to pay back that quick <coughs> that's a good question i i don't really know why um 
we broke it down to immediate needs to, to be conservative on the cost end of it. And everything stated is that we covered in our work session is an immediate need. It's a safety issue or it's just worn out and needs to be replaced. The septic receiving has always been treated, I guess, as kind of an optional. We don't need to do it. We don't issue permits for septic tanks. So we don't technically need to take it, but it is a revenue source. That's why it was separated out. Is there money reserved to cover it? Um, I, maybe that needs to be a question that we come back yeah. to in the future, but I mean, that it might just be that there's not enough money to cover. I, I don't okay. know. Well, it's, it would greatly, Tom, do you recall the, the ballpark the estimate? Oh, for well that? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's crazy. It's right here. It's 305,000. 335, I think, or something? 305. 305. Yeah. So uh, that would take us, we do have the money, but it would really, our fund balance and our reserve would go, go way, way down. But, but we can certainly uh, take a look at that. I have n another question for probably for Gary Rubel, his cover letter. In far as proposal one, he included three items, and one of the items of construction service agreement after design phase in the amount of 135000 And I'm not sure where this fits in the whole picture. Okay. And it doesn't in our proposals for A, B, C, and D. And E, it doesn't, I don't see where that figure fits in. Right. We have two, two outstanding issues. That is not in the motion currently, so right. we need to add that in the motion, the 135. <clears throat> and then there's another question, too. So, um, unless you have a different response, my intent was uh, to add that as a, uh, so it would be 220, 220 per the, 222-400 for total mm -hmm. uh, design, bidding, and construction services for B. Is that correct? Um, the reason, well, the reason it's it's not in B, yeah. and why it's not in others either, is because that mainly is put together as as a as a budget amount, and our thinking there was. And this is what we do with our, you know, major street projects. Uh, if you notice, when we take bids, there's two phases. There's the design phase and the construction phase. And even though we take bids and we award services uh, on the design phase, of course, we want to know what the implications are for cost on the construction phase for budget purposes. Now. What we do is we gather <clears throat> the design fee, w which we award as a basis of not to exceed for the design phase. But through the design phase, then um, we get into the, uh, the fleshing out the details, plans, and provisions. And at that point, there's a, a work plan involved with the construction phase that the consultant uh, may be able to fine tune the construction amount which here is $135,000. And so when we, we're using that figure as a budget amount and setting a program amount, basically. But initially, like we do in street projects, we award the design phase with an agreement here. And then we come back with a fine-tuned and maybe revised cost on the construction phase. So at the time of the bidding, we then return and the council gets to look at the fees for the design phase. <coughs> I mean for the, excuse me, the construction phase. But it wouldn't go over this number. Basically. Right, and right now we treat it as a budget figure or a not to exceed. Now, on the other hand, if you want to do, to, you know, um, go with the budget figure for construction fee, you know, you can do that tonight if you like, but um, I was just playing it on the safe side that, you know, in case something transpires between now and the bid, um, it can be addressed before you award a construction phase agreement. I, I need some further understanding with this. Is this money possible, that's 135000 probably paid to Tetratech, or would it be something internally billed back through your department? 
I don't, I don't know what you mean by build well, back through the department. Well, some, sometimes you, you as a chart, I understand there's a charge back that comes to your department for your services that's added on to the project. I don't know. So that, who's going, the question really is, where, who's going to receive this $135,000 that you're projecting? Well, this this is the consultant's fee. So it's Tetra Tech. Correct. The, the proposal is from Tetra Tech. Well, I don't see it anywhere. It's in the letter. It's in uh, this in letter. Part yeah. B. It's it's in this cover letter. It's but in the but letter. I don't see any further detail where the hundred thirty five thousand dollars comes out. It's it's in the letter from Tetra Tech. Um, right. But Correct. It's not in. The, it's not part of the motion. You it's not going to be part of the motion. It's the separate thing. Oh, it's thing. part. It's part of a submission a, and I need okay. more information yeah. on it. It's in this. But like it's only the. Um, yeah. If I may, Mayor, the yeah, um, memo, the portion a, was just acknowledged the receipt of the memo and explains that's in there. But we're actually individually approving the dollar amounts based on the memo, Jim. That, that's my understanding. And the 135 would be part of another we're based, phase. We're of design. approving it based on it. This motion says October 30th, 2012, letter from Tetra Tech. I didn't We're find it, I'm sorry. based on the letter from Tetra Tech B. And for, for clarification, it's those engineering services that would take written. place during construction. It's the review of contractor submittals. It's the preparation of uh, pay certificates and, and uh, those kinds of things. And, and it's also to have, in this case, probably a, a part-time representative on site to monitor the construction and, and uh, uh, compare what's going on to what the construction documents require. So it, it, is, it is an engineering service, not a, not a building department kind of inspection. Uh, the question that w um, would arise is if um, we're authorizing the uh, city manager to sign the proposal, but we're not referring to this 135000 in the motion, right. is that problematic for your firm? No. Okay. Any other questions on this motion B? Yeah, because if we're not going to mention the 135,000, where are we going to mention it? It's going to come back to us with a revised number. That's what I was trying to clarify. That's right. what my understanding was, so okay. <coughs> but as it said in the proposal f from them that the construction may require refinement, so once the design is complete, so they're saying that's a target. Right, right. No, I understand that. I just right. that we are actually individually approving the rate. So if 135,000 is on here, if we're not approving <coughs> it, so. Right. Okay. Is there further discussion on motion B? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. Uh, item C is a motion to acknowledge receipt of the October 30th, 2012 letter from Tetra Tech regarding water and sewer rate study to approve or not approve the engagement of Tetra Tech to conduct the water rate study at a cost of $15,900 and to authorize or not authorize the city manager to sign the acceptance of their written proposal dated October 30th, 2012. Move to approve, move to authorize. Second. Move Gearbox, second Peters. Third discussion? Mm -mm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item D is a motion to acknowledge receipt of the October 31st, 2012 letter from Tetra Tech regarding the S2 <coughs> grant to approve or not approve the engagement of Tetra Tech to apply for an S2 grant and draft a wastewater treatment plant project plan at a cost of $34,000 and authorize or not authorize the city manager to sign the acceptance of their written proposal dated October 31st, 2012. Move to approve and to authorize. Second. Your boss second to her. Discussion? Just a quick question. <coughs> As we were talking about the sludge um, uh, treatment or whatever, isn't there potentially that we could borrow if we get access to the loan fund, the additional three hundred five thousand dollars using that money instead of necessarily um, taking out of our fund balance? Or am I misunderstanding that? I believe so. Could you repeat the question? Um, we're you know we're concerned about what the um, sludge treatment trying to do that job and because it generates revenue for us. Could we not use the loan fund for the three hundred five thousand dollars instead of taking it out our of our fund balance and use that as a payback because potentially the interest that we're paying on it could be part of the fee structure. Accepted. So the, the, 
You say 135, this construction service? Well, no, it no. says we oh, need to be You're talking about the, the septage. The septage, correct. Receiving septage. But we could use the money out of the revolving loan fund instead Excellent. of out of our fund balance, so we could potentially do that as part of that if any, we get it. Yeah, they would They would fund any sewer improvement at the plant, uh, out, out in the out in the uh, collection system. Right. It would be your choice in the future year. Okay. Well, wait, hold on. Don't sit down. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the resolution that will be the next motion, we had a question about um, it's a, this, it's got the blank. Is that, we don't have the principal amount not to exceed number. Is that the 123 that you have um, the summary sheet? Uh, I believe it is indeed, yes. Um, Yes, they want the the one twenty three two ten. Actually, it would be it would be the three thousand application, the the twenty thousand dollar previous study, and the thirty one thousand dollar project plan for fifty four thousand dollars. And then uh, you will need to submit once we get all this approved on your behalf. You would need to submit another application for the design at that time. Okay, so this resolution that we're going to be putting together, that we're going to put on the next motion, would be so that the uh, paragraph second from the bottom, where is it's the determination of the municipality that at this time a grant in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed 54000 Correct. Correct. Again, we're going to have to do it in pieces, but that's the first piece. Okay. So currently we have a motion on the floor about the um, approving the grant and um, the engagement to draft the project plan. Is there a discussion on that? No further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And then the item E is a motion to approve or not approve the resolution authorizing the S2 grant agreement and designate the C manager as the authorized representative. Move to approve. Second. Move tomorrow, second gear bond. Discussion? Mr. Rhodes. Um, just before we left this completely, I did want to, to uh, bring up one point on this uh, septage service that we've been talking about, and, and that is that we don't have to spend money to continue to generate revenue. It works as it is now, maybe not quite as convenient, but if it generates a quarter of a million dollars a year in revenue without us spending any additional monies, I don't know that we need to rush off and borrow money to, to improve that facility. Okay. Um, item, did I call this one? No. No. So we have a motion to approve the resolution. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 1220, Woodland Drive Reconstruction Project Final Payment. This is a motion to acknowledge receive the October 23rd, 2012. Memo from City Superintendent Engineer Rubel to approve or not approve the project closeout and final payment of $68,126.60 to Barrett Paving Materials for completion of the Woodland Drive Reconstruction Project. Do you have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Gear by second. Morrow? Nope, it was Peters. Peters. Oh, sorry. It was Rhodes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I totally screwed that one up. Good Rhodes. <laughs> Rhodes. And you, Morrow? Mm hmm. Okay, Mr. Rubel. Thank you. Um, I'm bringing the uh, request uh, for the <clears throat> final payment. Um, it's a it's a prerequisite of the uh, Category F grant we received, the 375,000 grant we received for doing uh, the project <coughs> as a state contribution, and. Uh, once this is approved, then I just need to file one letter with the state to close out the project, notify them that we've made final payment. Um, I've attached in my, my cover memo uh, an, an accounting of the project, and uh, the bottom uh, line shows that we, uh, we had a contract modification that reduced the contract amount by about $58,000, and so we are, uh, finished it uh, well under uh, what was bid. So. 
there was at least that uh, amount of decrease in the anticipated contract expenses. And uh, it's probably, you know, it, it's good it happened that way because we actually, uh, the, the bid came in higher than the budget, so now we're back into the realm of being very close to what we budgeted, so we, it's uh, the negatives and the positives cancel out. Um, the project was very successful. We did encounter a lot of upper 90 and 100 degree days, but the Concord excavating work worked very well despite the, the conditions out there and Barrett paving uh, did a great job uh, managing and paving the project. Uh, they, they furnished all of the paperwork uh, that was required for category F uh, uh, funding and MDOT requirements. And uh, Wilcox Professional Services did an outstanding job of uh, administering uh, the, rec uh, the records from their offices. Um, George Danafil and I managed the project on site, did the daily inspection, so we endured the 103 degree days uh, out there together. And uh, so we, we did save quite a bit of money uh, avoiding any uh, construction engineering costs. We basically did it all in house, except for a few days that uh, George and I weren't available that Wilcox uh, put a man on the field. And so we did that, as you can see, we did have a you know, substantial cost avoidance, uh, which would be uh, something we, if a, con if a consultant was out there full time and he had full time administration, we'd have paid that out of pocket. But as you know, cost avoidance, we take that money and we throw it into uh, money on the road for improvements. So that's the benefit in the long run. And uh, so, with that, if, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Any questions for Mr. Rubel? Mr. Rhodes? Not a question, but a comment. That's a great project. That road is. is enjoyable to drive on. It's very pleasant now. And um, it included bike lanes mm -hmm. on the majority of it. So that addressed our complete streets requirements and our non-motorized transportation plan. And my hope is that we can, in the not too distant future, connect those bike lanes up to the recently completed non-motorized path in Pittsfield Township, which terminates just north of Teft Park and our bike lanes terminate just south of Teff Park, or east and west, however that happens to go, but I think it's north and south. So it'd be really good to have that little connector put in there. Okay, further discussion? We have a motion on the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, fee rates for home-based business, tier two. This is a motion to acknowledge receipt of the October 25th, 2012 memo from City Superintendent Engineer Rubel to approve or not approve the revised recommended home based business tier two fees, effective immediately to become part of the city's fee book. Move to approve. Second. Second. Second Roth. <laughs> approve. Discussion. Good work. Um, Mr. Rhodes. I just wanted to compliment city staff on uh, being responsive to my uh, earlier stated concerns about the amount of that initial uh, fee. I, I think the, um, the 300 that's proposed now is at a level where, where individuals who are contemplating those kind of home businesses will actually come forward and register themselves. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Rubin. <coughs> new business, item 12166. This is a request to purchase MERS credit service for Dennis Grushaw. This is a motion to not <coughs> proceed of the October 26, 2012 memo from C. Manager Campbell and the October 28, 2012 letter from Dennis Grushaw to approve or not approve the t request of Dennis Grushaw to purchase additional credit services, service as outlined in his application for additional credit service with a calculation date of November 1st, 2012, at a cost to the employee of $11,304. And that the City Council has read, understands, and approves or does not approve the governing body resolution on page two of Mr. Grushaw's application for additional credited service. <coughs> Do we have a motion? I would move to approve and approve. We have a motion by Mr. Rose. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Hart. Discussion? Mr. Rhodes. Um, I'm not really a fan of this whole process, but I did move to approve it because we have done that for other folks and um, it is a permitted activity. 
I did note that in the MERS calculation, they've reduced their annual projected uh, return rate down to 7%. I think it used to be 8%. I still have a real high level of concern with them being able to maintain that rate. Um, doesn't hurt MERS at all, but it leaves the city on the hook if the return is less than they're stated. And I, I, I really wish that they would use a lower rate. But I understand that would probably increase the cost to the employee when they purchase their, their credit. Any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I know I'm uh, C12168, actually to 12168, audit report from Plant Moran for fiscal year ended June 30th, 2012. I need a motion to now receive the audit report from Plant Moran for fiscal year ended June 30th, 2012. So, so moved. Move. Move Gearbox, second from Morrow. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Commissioner of Committee reports. Mr. Rhodes. Environmental Commission met, and uh, among other things, we had a, uh, another successful electronic waste recycling event this last Saturday. Uh, that was co-sponsored with the uh, Fifth Corner, Salinas Teen Center. Don't know the uh, weights or the dollar amounts yet, but I will report on that when we do get that information. Um, we also are in process of beginning to talk with um, Chase at Channel 18 about generating some videos that relate to environmental issues that could be uh, broadcast on 18 from time to time. And we are, have begun discussion about how we might be able to improve the appearance and the functionality of the recycling bins that are and containers that are located in the foyer to City Hall. And um, so we, we hope by early next year to have that done. And uh, we have authorized the purchase of some different LED kinds of light bulbs that one of our members could take around to some of the businesses downtown and let them actually try them out to see how they work within their environments without them actually having to purchase something. The, the end goal being hoping that they will in fact see the value of having those LEDs and um, purchase them, change over from their incandescent <coughs> fluorescent lights that they have. And uh, let's see, I guess the last thing is um, I attended the River Raisin Watershed Council meeting the minutes uh, and some other things have just recently been transmitted to other members of, of city council by our, by our city clerk. Um, and as some of you may recall, the city of Saline is not a current dues paying member of that organization because we had some concerns about the long term viability. So I joined as a, as a, a personal member so that I could get that information. And it does appear that they have reorganized themselves and restructured and I believe that they will uh, be a viable organization and sometime soon we will probably receive our um, dues letter from them. They did reduce the amount of the dues from 18 cents per individual to 10 cents, so it'll cost us about $880 if we decide as a, as a council to rejoin the River Raisin Watershed. That's it. Here are there other commission, Ms. Dahar. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the Arts and Culture Committee met last Monday evening, um, and um, we have the committee has been reviewing um, the survey that we undertook about a year ago um, of arts and culture organizations, groups, and individuals in the community, um, and also looking at the um, Washtenaw. A countywide arts and culture study and plan that was conducted a couple of years ago um, to see what direction um, and goals we might take. And um, so, one of the one of the elements of this is uh, has been discussion for of the desirability of an arts and culture center somewhere in the city. Um, and this this would be a major project um, and would need lots of discussion. So the, the next thing that will be um, visible in the community is um, a community forum that we hope to organize and sponsor 
um, in mid to late January, possibly January 17th and or 24th. So stay tuned for more information about that. Mr. Peters. Yeah, just a couple of announcements on uh, chair openings on some of our commissions. We had some vacancies on the, on the Parks Commission. We had a person uh, take work out of state. So we have an opening there on the Parks Commission. They would like to be a committee member. I just call City Hall, contact myself or, or Diane and get you going. And on the Celtic Festival, we have a couple positions open. We're looking for someone for advertising and marketing. This would be involved in laying out and designing brochures, uh, booking radio time, uh, negotiating billboard rates, issues like that. We also are looking for someone to chair the transportation. This would be going out to different uh, transportation companies and taking bids and analyzing those bids and awarding the bids and, and coming <coughs> up with uh, with schedules for transportation. And we're looking for someone that does IT, web design. We have a, a nice IT web, but it needs maintenance and updated all the time. So if anybody has those skill sets, uh, again, uh, call City Hall, and we'd be glad to have you on board. <clears throat> Any other commissioner committee reports? Uh, reports or other announcements? Mr. Rhodes. Um, I attended the uh, MML um, Economic Development and Land Use Committee meeting in, in Lansing today, and we developed positions on four House bills and two Senate bills, and then talked about several other uh, issues that did not require a formal vote on yet at this point in time. The um, two of those uh, bills generated a fair amount of, of conversation. One is House Bill 5928, which has to do with billboards and digital billboards. And um, there's an opportunity, there's a time window for uh, municipalities to take particular positions on that. So I will get together with uh, Mr. Campbell here in the next few days and pass on some information and then see if we want to do anything with that. And the other uh, one was Senate Bill 1291-1292, which is a uh, package of bills that have been pushed by AT&T because apparently they want to get into uh, home security, home monitoring in a big way. And their proposal, as it's currently drafted, drastically reduces any oversight of companies that are going to be engaged in that particular process. And so that's one that MML took a strongly opposed position on. And um, again, I'll, I'll get together with our city manager and pass some more of that information on. And then the other thing is, um, it was mentioned that Lieutenant Governor Kelly this Thursday is supposed to reveal some more of the detail behind the uh, probable um, elimination of the personal property tax and how that's going to uh, shake out. So, anxiously waiting for that on Thursday. Don't have a time. Any other reports or announcements? Um, well, I would just, an announcement, I'd like to say congratulations to Brian Morrow for being elected our next mayor, and also to Councilmember Rhodes and Councilmember Kirba and a future Councilmember Burgoyne. So, congratulations. Congratulations to you as well, Mayor, for Thank being you. elected our next state representative. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Campbell, you had a community video tour agreement that we have attached to our packet. Do you want to go over that? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, briefly, some of you may recall uh, CGI Communications, um, a little over three years ago, city entered into agreement in the, the uh, community video tour. Um, and I believe I put this in your, in your packets here a few weeks back. Um, the uh, on the on our homepage, the city, the city of Selene's homepage, there's the uh, toward in the center towards the bottom of the homepage is it's called Selene Video Tour Book and has the picture of the caboose on it, and there's uh, six um, one-minute videos approximately, like uh, the, the welcome, quality of life, real estate, education, business and industry, recreation. Those are meant to for folks considering moving to Selene, for instance, and to check us out. Um, and there's no cost to the city, except we have to, we have to have it on our, our website. Um, they, the way they pay for that is if you go there and click on it, you'll notice on each video there's a number of uh, um, logos of different businesses, local local businesses, and uh, they CGI comes in, sells those packages to these folks, or they, they do a video, or they're just links to their website. 
but it's a way to, to advertise their business, and that's how they pay for the cost. Um, they would like to um, uh, extend it for another, I think it's three or four years. Um, again, same, similar terms. The one thing I think is what they'd like to add to it is this uh, um, uh, not-for-profit uh, video, and then they have, I believe it's 20. It's a first-come, first-served basis, but it's uh, 20 not-for-profits that would have that they would be able to do their but at no cost. So, which I think is is very very good, I think. Uh, so, if that's something that, like, I guess just, if that's something that City Council is interested in entertaining, we can move forward with that. But um, I just wanted to, to throw it out there and, and see what, if Council, there was any uh, folks that, that didn't want to do it. Mr. Rhodes. The, um, in their, their agreement letter, their, their middle section has a program add-on. We're talking about streaming additional five minutes of video per month. Is that something new from our previous agreement with them? I, I believe so, yes. I thought so. It, that seems like a very worthwhile thing to do. I mean, we can take some of the things that we're going to put onto Channel 18 and have that sent over to, to them to go on our website. And of course, they would. I mean, updating the current ones, the, the welcome and those type, you know, and, and update any of the existing ones. We we would like they would do the this same. The, the, yes, the welcome message. We'll need to need to update that with uh, Mr. Morrow. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's been a great program. That uh, it's a way to, to really show people that aren't familiar with the community in an interactive way. Uh, what we have to offer and I think the fact we haven't had to pay for that and we haven't really gotten I mean the people that have sponsored it have been satisfied with it as far as I know I yeah. haven't gotten any feedback to the negative right to my understanding as well right so yeah I'm certainly in favor of any way we can promote and show show off Celine okay. very um, good especially when it doesn't cost money right. yeah <laughs> thank you thank you we'll, we'll proceed then thank you uh, we also wanted to talk about the countywide transit program. As many of you are aware, because it's been covered quite um, a bit in the paper after we voted, there's been a lot of changes and um, with municipalities opting out. And I, did, I have been in touch uh, with Michael Ford, and I know that Todd sent an email out, or was it in the communique, if you want to talk a little bit about tonight. And then um, I did ask Michael to come to the next meeting, because I knew we had a pretty well-packed meeting. But Michael, our representative from um, the ride, will be coming to talk about. It's obviously a big transition going on right now. So I don't know if you want to talk about tonight. Sure. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A um, couple things. Just because of um, you just need to open up the, the newspaper and see the number of jurisdictions that have opted out uh, of the authority. Um, so that's the reason I wanted to bring it back. Um, and also uh, a couple things. They did. Uh, I believe that. I believe. Um, City Clerk uh, Miss Hill uh, put it in the in the packets. We got a, a, a re notice, if you will, giving us until I think December 10th to either um, confirm the current position of opting in or to opt out. Um, and then there was also, and I've been I contacted a couple of the jurisdictions and, and traded some phone messages type of thing from folks as far as opting out and. And um, also been talking with um, folks from AATA, from the authority. And tonight they had a meeting um, at 5.30, and they wanted council representation. But I said, well, unfortunately, they're going to be busy. <laughs> but um, so we did, and they wanted, my understanding is that the meeting was to hear positions from the communities of what, uh, what did they want to see, what were their needs. And they wanted an official position of the city council. I said, well, I, I, I can't do that with a staff member. Um, but what we did was Catherine Skull agreed she went and she was kind of the eyes and ears, if you will. So she's going to report back of what transpired of that meeting. And then, um, as, as the mayor said, uh, hopefully uh, Michael will uh, we'll invite him to present it at the next meeting. Um, and then the thought potentially would be um, at the first meeting, the December 3rd meeting, would still be within that December 10th time frame to either reconfirm city's position or to opt out um, at that meeting. So that's, I just wanted to, again, just give you an update be, because there has been significant changes in this whole process. So is there any questions right now that it's a 
big flux right now. So, Mr. Gearbox. What was the status of Dexter since they were supposed to? I think that's uh, what the meeting tonight was about. Really, they're trying to work with the people, with the organizations, the municipalities that they were sort of in flux, like Pittsfield was going to be there tonight. There's well, a couple. Yeah, no, but it said vote was planned for November 12th for Dexter. I'm looking at something Mr. Peters asked and didn't know how their outcome was. I mean, from my perspective right now, I'm, I'm ready to vote and re rescind what we went for because this obviously is not something that we either understood well enough or what was proposed looked better for us than any other community. And at this point, being the only piece individual on this that's actually supported it, including the city of Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, I understand, has voted against it. I think it would be prudent for us to reconsider now and not worry about in the future because this plan obviously is going to change immensely from what it uh, was proposed to us. I have a sneaking suspicion that it won't be. It's pretty much collapsing, but I think it, it should be. We should offer a ETA an opportunity to come and talk about what's happened today, what happened tonight what happened with Dexter, you know, all of those pieces so that we can be informed. I, I personally would prefer to be more informed taking a vote than to just, you know, just vote right away. So I think... Well, I, we'll maybe after the next meeting. I would rather not postpone it until the 1st of December, but after we have our discussion that we make a call at that point because it's obvious something needs to be done. Any further discussion? Mr. Morrow? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I, um, I, I concur. I don't have any problem with having um, AATA's CEO, Michael Ford, come and make a presentation at one of the upcoming council meetings. Um, but my sentiments are, um, are, are, are very <coughs> closely aligned with my colleague, Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a supporter of, of a countywide transit authority. I'm a supporter of regional transportation. Um, but it's apparent um, that this is just not going anywhere. And based on the number of, of municipalities that are opting out, it just doesn't seem prudent to participate. So again, I look forward to having um, CEO Ford come and make a presentation at an upcoming council meeting. But my prerogative would be to, to resend our, our previous motion um, in support or, excuse me, uh, our previous motion um, acknowledging the fact that we'd be opting in. Further discussion? So we'll put it on the next agenda. Um, also, at the last, uh, we had a presentation by the Celtic Festival and we talked about doing a work session. Um, we'd like to do that next week and I request that any council members that have questions, specific questions that they'd like to hear about so that the uh, members of the uh, festival could to answer those questions. Um, oh, well, I thought we talked about doing that in this next meeting too. No? Mr. Campbell. We could look at maybe the first, but it's time sensitive for the health insurance discussion. Okay. So we could. Okay. Um, That's what we talked about, but anyway. Oh, sorry. That's fine. Okay. So, but if you guys, if uh, council members could p p prepare their questions so that they could be prepared for the work session, that would be really helpful. Is it, uh, I'm, I'm a little confused, Mayor. Is it questions specifically relating to the, the finances of, of the festival, the, 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 the programs and amenity, the group? Anything. Oh, anything? Okay. So um, my, the request was made at a previous council meeting to have a work session, and uh, the festival folks requested in order to be fully prepared that there were specific questions. Um, they, they have those in advance so they know, so they can be prepared. Which uh, I think that's appropriate. Email questions to Mr. Campbell or? Sure. Okay. Mr. Roth. I would say I was one that suggested that, and my big concern is it's a, an item or it's a category in our budget is the Celtic Festival. I'd like to see if they have their 501c3 status that they could be removed from the classification in our budget and they can be stand on their own. Could you submit that and Mr. to Mr. Campbell in their, in their email and any other thoughts that you might have regarding what they need to be speaking to at the work session? That would be really helpful. So we would do that at the December 3rd meeting is what you're saying, Mr. Campbell, the work session? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any other discussion items? What is the work meeting subject matter on November 19th? Health, health, health insurance. Health insurance. Health insurance. Okay. 
If there's no further discussions under public comment under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who likes to speak is requested when not required to state his name and address for the record. Mary Hess. And of course, I am going to talk on our walkable communities of which uh, council and many of our advertisements talk about. I appreciate the council that serves us and it also serves <coughs> us with obligations. Uh, our city attorney and during my 20 some years on council, there are times when I had to talk to the city attorney over things and uh, to say that uh, as Mr. Roth brought up and the city manager says, you're insured. Well, it's like car insurance. If somebody uh, leaves your car open with keys in it, you're not insured. If uh, you allow a license, unlicensed driver to use your car, there are obligations. And that is the ordinances of which I read. If the council does not address their legal and get an opinion from their legal, then it appears to me that personally, you have been derelict in your duty. I know it's been addressed that we're looking into it. Looking into it, government time, let's see, I think our last looking into it was 15 years ago when we did a sidewalk study. It is important. It's distressing to hear about non-motorized trails and it would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice, but safe sidewalks are an obligation. And I expect, as the public expects, to, for you to in fact start this during the winter, the study, and in fact save some of this money that you have, I guess, there's a, what, $400,000 possible bridge going over the river on their dream plan that uh, maybe we can uh, put instead of $50,000 next year in sidewalks, we can put more in the sidewalks so that they will be repaired. It is your obligation to keep us safe. And when I have to have a sidewalk in front of my house and keep it safe, so does the city have to make sure everyone's are. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Is there any other business to come before the city council? As we discussed, we do have upcoming meetings. Uh, specifically, uh, this Saturday, we have a special meeting at 9 a.m. One day, a work meeting at 6 and a regular meeting at 7.30. December 1st, uh, council meeting, and December 3rd and December 17th. And again, we talked about a work session on the 3rd. Um, we will now uh, be, uh, we need a motion to go into closed session to consider material exempt from discussion or disclosure by stat state or federal statute. In particular, discuss a confidential written le legal opinion subject to attorney-client privilege. Move now, to convene into closed session. Second. second. Well, second. Roth. Uh, we need a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Rhodes? Yes. Councilmember Peters? Yes. Councilmember Gearbuck? Yes. Councilmember Terhar? Yes. Councilmember Roth? Yes. Councilmember Morrow? Yes. Mayor Driscoll? Yes. We're moving to uh, adjourn into closed session at 9.30. We will be reconvening. <coughs> Bar and roll call, please. Um, Councilmember Roth? Here. Yes. Councilmember Gearbuck? Yes. Councilmember Chahar? Yes. Councilmember Morrow? Yes. Councilmember Rhodes? Yes. Councilmember Peters? Yes. Mayor Driscoll? Yes. Okay. Uh, the session, our meeting is reconvened at 9.55. Is that right? Okay. And um, we need a motion to authorize the city attorney to proceed in accordance with the city attorney's confidential written legal opinion subject to attorney I have privilege as given during the closed session earlier this evening. Move to authorize. Move your Do we have a second? Second, Rhodes. To authorize. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries and we need a motion to adjourn at 1056. So moved. moved. Move tomorrow. Second, Gearbaugh. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries.